So now let's uh, discuss this issue of the seed of the Lamar, namely the way in Python you uh, actually set a seed is using the command random.seed, and then you s then it has an argument called seed, which you set to be your favorite integer. And that will always, uh, that has an interesting feature that uh, it will start at that integer. So we, here we have a little test of this. Uh, we have this Python code here, sets the seed to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, not clearly a, a very sensible choice. Uh, then we draw a figure and we plot two histograms on it. Each of the histograms uh, is of two, two uh, random variables, base and base two. Both of these are from 110 to 140, uniformly distributed. And base and base two are started with the same seed. Um, if you start them with the same seeds, they're going to be identical. Therefore, when you look at the uh, plot, which is here, of base and base two, you will find uh, you will not see two histograms, you'll just see one uh, of uh, the merged color, which is what you get by putting two, um, hist two identical plots on, the, on top of each other. Uh, so that um, could be contrasted with a different choice. Here we actually have three uh, different random variables, base four, base one, and base three. Uh, base 4 is generated with the same seed we had before, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's actually equal to the previous uh, distribution. Base 1 uh, just leaves off where base 4 finishes. Uh, so it's actually related to base 4, but if we have a decent generator, there is no correlation between random numbers, uh, between one random number and the next. And so base 4 and base 1 should be fine and should be different. As an alternative way of getting a different answer, we're just set to a different seed. So base three corresponds to the seed seven six five four three two one, different from that for base four, and different from that for base one. We don't actually know what the seed is for base one. It's just whatever the random number was um, at the end of the base four calls. That's what we saw with two on top of each other, and here we see uh, three histograms we get when we histogram the three uh, base three bases from that uh, case with different uh, starting points. And you do see genuinely three different plots. And green, blue, and, and purplish, reddish. And you, so you see two things there. A, they're, the three are different. We have three clear different histograms. And also, it gives you an illustration of the scatter between um, um, uh, different um, uh, cases. And in fact, you see that's uh, different in different uh, circumstances. Here, they are, uh, the three choices are almost the same at this case here. Uh, here, the three choices are pretty uh, extremely different. And in, in the other bins, they're sort of in between. Uh, this slide. Does a little bit more uh, detail. It actually um, is the same as the previous side, generating three different um, sets of random numbers, but actually uh, starts printing out the uh, initial and final random numbers. Just something you get automatically in Python. And you can see that um, if we look at um, If we look at this one, the first number is 117.11008750505. And then if we go to base two, it actually has the same seed as base, and it has the same value. So here in detail, uh, we saw that uh, previously with the actual histogram. Here we see it in detail in the numerical values of the uh, random variables. Um, here we have the case now base one. It starts off where base two, uh, or in fact base finishes. And you can see it's actually pretty different. 133.51, it just has totally different random numbers. Finally, we see what we've already demonstrated, that if we actually set the seed explicitly as something different from before, we get base three, and base three is different yet from base one and base two. So this printout 
just verifies what the histogram showed. Um, now we come to just a few plots illustrating the um, effect of changing um, the seed and and, uh, and so we do that by just looking at plots for um, our basic counters. Here we have 250 events counted uh, 4,000 times and that's certainly a million, a million a sample of a million. That sample of a million is chopped up into into 4,000 counters. And uh, so when we uh, histogram that, uh, we of course get our usual thing centered at, two, at uh, 250, which is here. And it's got a Gaussian distribution. But this histogram is pretty, uh, wish it, pretty uh, ragged, and in particular, it's this dramatic dip here. Now that you can say, wow, that's significant. Either we have one dip or two peaks every. If you have a, a dip, then you must have peaks either side. <coughs> and uh, so that's exciting. We found two particles. However, uh, that's not really true because um, the number of events here is 100. The square root of 100 is 10. Uh, this is two standard deviations, 80, this point here. So it's not significant. 80 is not uncommon. These are one standard deviations. So. Nothing, you can't really draw any conclusions. These ones fluctuate up, these ones fluctuate down, and that's just life. If you just run the program a second time, um, that dip has disappeared. Uh, there is actually one bin which is low, but it's only low by a little more than one standard deviation, which will happen pretty often, 30% of the time. So. In fact, this particular plot looks better, but that's not because we did anything. That's just luck. It's just a little nearer, smooth, the smooth curve, the red curve that we expect to go through these points.